Leanna Dudley. I'm a neurooptometrist and I've been in private practice for 15 years. I work here at Denver Vision Therapy, where I'm the owner, in Denver, Colorado. I specialize in neurooptometry, seeing patients who have any neurological issues. My adults tend to come in with concerns regarding concussions, uh, stroke, brain tumor, Lyme disease, any kind of condition that can affect the brain can affect the visual system on a functional level. And so that's a lot of my patients, which is why seeing patients with visual snow syndrome just makes sense because it's another neurological condition. The other element of my practice is developmental optometry. So I work with children who have um, developmental issues with their vision, which may lead to difficulties in school and other challenges. And so um, we work with both kids and adults. After optometry school at Pacific University, I did an optional residency at the SUNY College of Optometry in vision therapy and rehabilitation, uh, where I got a lot of experience in working with patients with concussions as well as developmental vision issues. After moving to Colorado, I started my own practice where we only specialize in these types of cases. I don't do primary care, so this is my every day um, to see all these functional vision cases, and I have to say I absolutely love my job. I really love seeing the challenging cases, and is there's never a case that's too difficult or too complex. Over the years, we've seen many, many types of neurological cases, concussion cases, and naturally we started seeing more and more visual snow syndrome patients as the diagnosis became more well known. One of my colleagues, Dr. Shidlovsky, had started lecturing about that, which brought it to my attention, and I started real, you know, asking more of my patients about visual snow in particular, and the number of them that I said, oh yeah, I have visual snow, was kind of remarkable, um, because in my patient population, I'm gonna see a lot more than most primary care optometrists would. Um, so as we started seeing more, I started looking for more resources about it, and um, naturally came to the visual snow initiative website because it's such a well done website um, with so many resources and, and started keeping up on the research about it and really finding other um, avenues to treat patients. We have a lot of tools already. Our, our practice is pretty well set up to treat visual snow syndrome and we added a few additional tools to help specifically these types of patients. It's really meaningful to me to be able to treat patients who may have been dismissed by um, the medical community um, because their condition is misunderstood. And we really want to understand what the patient's going through so that we can address their symptoms and their concerns. Well, visual snow syndrome is interesting because you can you can pull it out of the patient with a simple question about visual snow, but then it's always tied together with so many other things. So for example, the, the other conditions that we treat, binocular vision dysfunction, convergence problems, tracking, in the visual snow syndrome population, those patients have, 60% of them will have uh, one of those conditions, and so they usually are experiencing a lot of vision symptoms. So it's not just the visual snow, it's all these other symptoms that come with it, and that those are patients that we see all the time every day. So the visual snow keys us into what kind of constellation of issue they're dealing with, but we're already equipped to deal with a lot of what's causing them to have symptoms. And so it's, it's great to be able to identify that and to, first of all, explain it to them so that they can understand more about their condition, but then also provide a lot of tools that help with their symptoms. So they're, um, they're really gratifying patients to treat, and I enjoy educating my patients on what's going on with their brain.